Michael Malone. And this is Joe Rage, the heavyweight classic. This is Mad Dog O'Dockery. This is Tonga. I'm the Breaker, Carl Kingsley. This is the infamous Cameron Solis. And you're listening to... And you're listening to... You're listening to... Broken but Glorious. Broken but Glorious. To Broken but Glorious podcast. Because like me, you are head to toe. Pro. Hello, welcome to Brit Rest Journeys on BBGWrestling.com. I'm Chris Lapp, and I'm delighted to be joined on the line by the star attraction, Jimmy Jackson. How are you doing, Stephen Jimmy? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. Yeah. yeah, Huge thanks for joining me this evening. So. No problem. Yeah, it was, a, it was great seeing you for the first time live on Sunday. It's it it something I've wanted to do no, for ages. So, so. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a, a nice surprise. <laughs> I was like, ah, it's Jimmy. <laughs> So I've seen quite a lot, a lot on YouTube. And so when we, when we, you know, at the end of the show, we usually do a people create the cards, also people they uh, worked with. Yeah, yeah. And you're well, sort of your, a last your, minute thing, but I, yeah, I love that. I love, I love working with TNT. Yeah, fantastic job doing it. Yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, we've been to every show at TNT since it's come back. So the next one is on Halloween, and the kids are at Halloween parties. Oh, I miss it. <laughs> Yeah, no, hopefully I'll be on that one too, but I do a lot of work around Halloween, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how has your return to the ring been since post-lockdowns? Uh, it was weird, you know, like, I, I don't think anyone expected, obviously, lockdown to be what it was. It was like, mm. like apocalyptic, really, wasn't it? It was the weirdest thing I think anyone's ever been through, but yeah, I, I just stayed as busy as I could, obviously. Once mm. lock, lockdown restrictions got a bit, you know less intense and stuff. Like I, I obviously uh, do gymnastics and stuff and I've got like a place that I'm allowed to go and train to uh, train at and obviously I've got a key to it. So mm-hmm. I just went down, let, me, let myself in and just, just obviously just try to stay active and obviously try to remember all the flips that I can do. Obviously working on my road, working on my flips and luckily enough, I never never lost them. Yes, we, we thought it didn't work. We thought, we always like, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's like, it's we all thought it's only going to last a couple of weeks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Eight months later, work from home. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so about the return to your ring. So, yeah. was it the first night back? Your first match back, the Unstoppable Heavyweight Title Tournaments. Was that the first show yeah, back? Think, yeah, yeah, the Unstoppable. I think was the first show back. Yeah, but uh, I love working. So it's always a good laugh, and obviously, like, all the lads are great and stuff. So, uh, yeah, absolutely love working for Unstoppable. And then um, Title, we had a. Exchange a couple of wings with uh, Jake Silver. He's, he's a lot of fun. Yeah. Was fun match. Pop, the pop punk kid, yeah. No, I love working <laughs> Jake. He's a character in there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like I said, all the bookings are coming in that, that nice, and, nice and quick now. It's actually good to see. I think this lockdown can be good and actually reevaluate and, you know, assess the game plan and obviously get my name mm. out there a bit more. Yeah. Were there, were there any matches or storylines that you were meant to be in during 2020 that you're really looking forward to that couldn't happen because of COVID? No, I can remember at the top of my head, like I said, I've always done a lot of work for GPW and stuff, but mm. um, yeah, I was just in a few m- matches here and there, obviously I got the British title back in 2017, had a nice little run with that, and obviously the final mm. lost it to Sam, Grad- with Sam Gradwell, which obviously I love working so I've known Sam for a while. But, well, Sam's cool, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously yeah, they always get to learn from the promise as well, which is good, but yeah, I, th- I think that's still the highlight of my career so far when the British title at GPW. Oh, you, you have mentioned that. So you've had this time off. You've had to rest, rest your body, get rid of all them niggling injuries, evaluate what's worked well and what hasn't worked well the last couple of years. So, so uh, have you made any tweaks to your character or to your moveset now we're back? Yeah, obviously. I've come to learn that less is more and stuff now, so I'm not as flippy. I just do it a bit more when it means something now. Yes. Right, but I've been, I've been told that for years. I just never listen, but now it's kind of sunk in a little bit. And obviously, I'm watching... And just, you know, studying, doing my homework and stuff and watching other people and sort of picking up what they do and kind of just reevaluating, yeah. And just try to stick to a new game plan now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I really enjoyed your match against, uh, well, you had, a, you had two matches against you. Uh, you couldn't know if, so I really enjoyed yeah, your match. Well, yeah, yeah, no, I, the class, class guys, yeah, I could love working. But, um, Isaac, sorry. But, yeah, um, Isaac, no. Uh, I've wrestled him once before a uh, show called EPW. Yes, but yeah. Um, yeah, but it's just when the people that just get in the ring with him, you just, just click, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some good chemistry there and stuff. And obviously, it's a good story to tell big guy, little guy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, before before this recent run with Ignition, I'd only ever seen him in like hardcore matches. 
So to say, mm. have like the, the matches he's having at the moment. So yeah, against the smaller guys, yeah, it kind of show, oh, shows off. Out, <laughs> when I found out I was at TNT Extreme, I thought, I know what match is this going to be then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, I mean, yeah, <laughs> won't we'll, we'll through no tables or all that. So. <laughs> but it's, it's, for him wrestling all the smaller guys recently, he's trying to show what a good wrestler he is. He's mm. just a hardcore guy. So. Yeah, I think he's not to do it all, to be honest with you. My, my, my six year old likes him even though he's a bad guy because he's called Isaac and my six year old's called Isaac. <laughs> so <laughs> he says, I can't, I can't boo, can't, I can't boo Isaacs. <laughs> <laughs> How do everyone? This is the Maestro Philip Michael and you're listening to BBG Wrestling. Who was your favourite wrestler growing up? Well, I've had a few of it years now. I think <clears throat> my earliest memory, I'd probably say Jeff because obviously me doing the free running and stuff, I've always hmm. kind of, that's probably the way I went into free running and jumping off of buildings and stuff because I thought I'd just do it and I thought, wow, you know yeah. what, that doesn't seem like a bad idea. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah no, I've always loved like, the Hardy Boys and stuff. And, uh, but when I start, really started watching wrestling and understanding it more, I watched a lot of TNA growing up and just mm-hmm. absolutely loved AJ Styles. Yes. I think he won it best. Well, I think he's proven it now everywhere he's gone. Yeah, he's just, that's one person that I'd love to have him actually. Yeah, but AJ is. Probably, I would say, my favourite wrestler. There was, there was a three-year period of TNA where I thought it was the best wrestler around. And so, up, up until around when Hulk Hogan and Bischoff came in and changed it all to like a four-sided ring. Yeah. The couple, the couple of two, maybe the two years before that, I thought it was the best wrestler. I, I loved it. I watched it every week. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I love the hexagon ring that they had, though. Like, mm. I, thought was, I thought it was different. It just, obviously, as a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> but I've only ever wrestled in one myself, and it's it's a lot different to a fourth sided ring, hundred percent. Like the ring positioning can be a bit off. Yeah, because uh, if just if you're on the top, you just get your angles right. Must be hard, and yeah, and the the area of the ring must be a lot smaller. Yeah, the, the footing's so. a bit wider as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, what prompted you to do the tights again? The ring yourself? So. Um, I don't know. Like, obviously, a bit been a little. Uh, been a little kid, I've always loved it and stuff. And obviously, I talked about the gymnastics and that. And me and my friend just always just to just get told off for wrestling in gyms, go, going off, and <laughs> doing, getting told off for doing what we're supposed to be doing, and uh, yeah, just doing that and just put little videos on YouTube, which I hope never see the light of day now. But <laughs> yeah, um, and then we just randomly start, started searching. It's like, why, why don't we try find a wrestling school? Because we didn't, we thought it was such an American thing. We didn't think that there'd be anything like a British training school. Mm. And then luckily enough, I came across Grand Pro Wrestling, and uh, I think I started training there. Uh, was it two? I'm trying to think now. Uh, I think it was 2011 because I couldn't start on the on the actual start date because I was on the uh, audition for Britain's Got Talent. Oh wow! So that's, that's how I remember it. We were part of one of them flippy dance groups. Or? Uh, yeah, kind of, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, we all got buzzed off for some reason, but yeah, oh. <laughs> so we must not have been that question. But yeah, we just, uh, cause I was still in school at the time, so it was just like a little school group, but we got, uh, we went to a, a dance competition called UDO, and uh, we got talent scouted for the, the thing there, and oh, we wow. got through straight to life, and then, yeah, we just never got through that stage, so that, uh, I think it was uh, Amanda Holden, David Hasselhoff, and Michael McIntyre that year. Oh, uh, yeah. I so that like, great time. But so that's when I started wrestling training, anyway. Yeah, that was about ten years ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so when you started training, was like Jeff Hardy here? You want to like mold your style around? No, I'd say it was probably more AJ Styles at the time. But oh well, yeah. Obviously, I was I was such a small. I, I don't know why, because my, my my dad's not that big either. But for some reason, when I was little, I thought I was going to be six foot four and like the size of Brock Lesnar. But yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> gen, gen, genetics didn't work like that. So yeah, same here. I was, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was I was I'm five foot seven, and I was five foot seven when I was fourteen. So I was like, I'm gonna be dead tall. <laughs> yeah. Stop, stop <laughs> going. Sat the down one day and was like, look, Mark, you're not going to be the size of him. Like, size of him. This is the best you're going to get. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Such a <laughs> Yeah, so that's when I started to adapt it and then started incorporating the gymnastics into my wrestling match. Like, obviously, I've seen Ray do it and I'm thinking, like, do you know what I mean? It's just R- Ray Mysterio watching. It's crazy. And to, he's still doing it now. It actually mm. baffles me. Like, sometimes when I get out of bed, when you start to get old, you start making that, Ugh, as you get up. I'm thinking, yes. And he's still flipping around. It must be pushing nearly 50 now, surely. I think he, yeah, I think he's only, he's 47, I think. 
See, it's, it like I'm saying, he's done a lot of stretching and done a lot of yoga then, haven't he? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Did you have an idea of a character when you wanted to start, when you start training, though? Uh, no, I was so generic it was painful at the start. Like, I had such a generic name. I started off as Mark Star. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I, I was in that phase of pleather shorts and all that kind of, that, you know, I was watching all people about and that. And then, because mm-hmm. I think, I think it were, Sam Gradwell got the idea off of that because I've seen him do it before. Obviously now he's uh, got he's doing the you know the whole NXT UK thing now. He's absolutely killing it and smashing it over there. But yeah, like obviously uh, it takes a while to find yourself, doesn't it? Yeah, clever. Oh, it's a it's a very two thousand very early Brit wrestling. I think it's kind yeah, of died yeah. out now. So like <laughs> yeah. 2012, 13, 14, you saw it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, think, I, think I, up, I think I jumped on the bandwagon as it, about a year and a half like, after it went out. So, <laughs> a bit, bit, bit late to the party. so where did the Jimmy Jackson character come from? Then? So, uh, as, as I did that uh, Mark Starr gimmick, um, at GPW, it was around the time of the Olympics. So, yeah. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Brannigan, who was my trainer, <clears throat> gave me the character gymnastic, obviously to go with the theme of the, the Olympics. Because uh, I was in a tag team with Ian Field and Mike Track. Yes, if you remember them? Yeah, so we all got thrown together. I think this is when Kevin Kevin Lloyd did uh, Paul Volt. I think you were called then. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> there are a few of us that were in that group, but. Yeah, I think that one just sort of stuck for a while, and then when I wanted, because it was more of a comedy kind of gimmick, so mm-hmm. I wanted to be a little bit more serious, and I knew that I was getting the title put on me and stuff, so we kind of rebranded, and I think Johnny wanted to still my name to be G- like Jim or Jimmy, and I just came up with uh, Jackson, obviously, kind of like after Michael Jackson, been like obviously with the, with the dancing and mm-hmm. the performance side of him and that. Oh, amazing. So, so I went with Jimmy Jackson. So take, take us back to like your, your first show, first match. What do you remember about it in hindsight? Was it any good? Have you gone back and watched it? Uh, I haven't seen it for a while now. I don't know if I dare. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I went out as Mark Star. It was a triple threat match with LA Austin and Ken Zen. And Ooh. from what I can remember, it was an absolute spot fest. I think, <laughs> I think there's a few, a few things that I do differently now. But mm. yeah, it, I, I had fun at the time. I remember I've been absolutely buzzing after the match and... Yeah, just the fact that you got to perform in front of a live crowd, I thought, yeah, this is me hooked after that. Huh. Yeah. I probably won't go back to the bleach blonde hair. I'd probably leave, leave that looking bin, but other than that, yeah. During the lockdown, we did have the speaking out movements. Um, how have you found Brit wrestlers different since you re- returned? Or has it, has you, have you felt in the rock and that it has changed? I feel like it's more professional now, mm. if you get me. I, I don't know how, I don't know how the word it really I think everyone feels a lot more comfortable now if you get me yes like obviously I, I, I didn't really follow it me and stuff for the you know I just like whatever happened happened I just worked on myself you know I kept going out of the gymnastics and you know, then obviously waiting for wrestling to start my cup again and then obviously see it all after it unfolded when I went back and it seems like <clears throat> obviously uh, whatever people have done you know I'm not not too sure of but like I say, obviously the people that have been hurt by it are in a better place now and can concentrate on wrestling and just find it fun again. Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, so as I said, the, I worked backstage at the Odyssey Pro Wrestling's debut show and that's it. Dead relaxed and everyone seemed cool with each other. And, yeah. It, yeah, the best way I can try it, it's not, it doesn't seem as clicky now, mm-hmm. if you get me. Yeah. Everyone seems to get on with everyone, which is nice to see. Yeah, and I think you can tell, tell that shows as well because everyone just seems dead, so happy. So when you, when yeah, you do meet and greets with all the wrestlers and stuff, it's, like, yeah, mm. but it's also given uh, people that didn't really get a look at, well, such as myself, really, like a, a chance to kind of, you know, step in a few vacated spots, I guess, as, as you call it that, like, and obviously get a chance to kind of show what they can do. Yeah, it's also like, like when um, NXT UK started and they just kind of ripped out the main events of the whole country. They didn't really notice it because everybody just moved up a level. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because because there's that much talent in all of the promotions that you don't. Yeah, mm. yeah. If you if you if a promoter and you do it well, where you you get the crowd invested in your roster, if a couple of people leave, you won't notice it because you're invested in the whole roster, you're not just invested in the main event. So when they move up, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so 
yeah, because I, I, I saw people moaning, like just just as Brett Rest coming back saying, "Oh, you can't get all the imports in," so Brett Rest is dead again. So it's not so much talent here. You don't need to bring in uh, Americans yeah. and. Well, I, I think I think it's wrestling scene now is it is fantastic. I think there's some unbelievable talent in the UK right now, and I think they're doing really well represent you know British wrestling. Mm. Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah, I've been to so many shows since the last, the last six weeks. Oh no, probably two months. End of July? I'm trying to think when we'd win. The first show we went to, maybe it was the end of July. Yeah, so the last mm. the ten weeks, I think we've been to eight shows, I think, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, we usually used to go like six a year, maybe. But we've been, yeah, just missed well, it that yeah. much. Yeah, we used to go to every <laughs> Wrestle Island show and then all the All Star shows, but. Mm. I think we just had that 18 months of not doing anything. We just went, oh, there's a wrestling show in Liverpool. Let's go to there. There's a wrestling show in North Wales. Let's go to there. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like I say, it's always good, obviously, because you get to see something different mm. every time, don't you? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. We've been to, been to two Britannia shows since we've come back. Every, so I think three, three TNA, TNT and two Wrestle Island shows. Must be, yeah. Must have been four TNT shows. But yeah. Oh, Love it, and the kids all love it. And it's, <laughs> yeah. So, go, so going forward, maybe over the next year, have you got like a a wish list of people you want to wrestle or, or promotions you want to work for? Love to try work for all of them. Obviously, whatever comes along. Obviously, I'm not getting I'm not getting my hopes. I'm not expecting like massive things. I mean, getting signed by AWB would be fantastic, wouldn't it? But yeah. just got to put the work in. Got to put the work in and grab. But like TNT were on my list for a while, and the fact that I've worked in. No, it's, I, I'm absolutely buzzing with that. And obviously yes. now, just just whatever comes my way and stuff. I like titles, another good one. Like I'm, I'm just kind of take, taking it as it comes. Well, on the opponent side of things, is there anybody you particularly want to wrestle over the next year or so? Well, I'd love to wrestle Will Ospreay now. So the amount of people that have said it to me, oh, you and Will have a good match. Like, yes, I, I see that. Yeah, it's not one bucket then. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not up to me, mate. But yeah, so... Uh, Robbie X as well. I'd love to work Robbie oh. X. Yeah. That, I'd, yeah, that's been, uh, I've wanted to do that for many years now, actually. O- o- I could see that. Yeah. You know, I'll be doing that. But like I say, I mean, there's people that have wrestled in the past, but that I don't get tired of wrestling, like, um, Valkabius. Every time I get in with Valkabius, we absolutely, like, we have great matches. I, I, I love being in the ring with Val, like, and he's mm. such a good base. I can do it with anything, like, it's like a night off, you know what I mean? When you do all these flips and stuff, it's like it's dead easy. Yes, it's all the work. He's 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 great. Yeah, I, I saw him years and years ago for EPW. He was, he was yeah. against um, yeah, actually. It, it's it's crazy because every now and again we train together and stuff. Oh, I can it, it does the things that I do at his size. It, it scares me. It's mm-hmm. absolutely terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like say 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 something for me to do, bro. <laughs> but, um, but obviously, he's just he's just good at what he does, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's a bit yeah, that's, yeah. He's been at la- wasn't the last TNT show, but he was the, the previous two, and yeah, he, he was great show in the Rumble, and then he had a great match with Scott Open in the following show. And then battered. Yeah, well, it's not. Like, it's just totally in the ring. There's a as Valkavius. Is um, it was him that actually got me in the TNT show. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and he's, he's looked after me over these last few months as well. Helped me get back. Obviously, once. We came back out of lockdown and stuff like that. Like, once we were out of training that together, we kind of went training together and stuff and obviously brushed all the rust off. Um, yeah, we just found out that we had really good chemistry and stuff. So every time we've had a match, we've always always had fun and, yeah, just loved it. Oh, amazing. <laughs> hey, he seems like a nice guy. I'm sort of... Oh, he's the best. I was like, kind of trying to remember where we sit. So, probably 2000 and... I might have been like late 16, maybe early, early 17 is the first time I saw him. EPW. A lot of people forget he's been doing it a long time. Yeah. Been, like, he, he were like with like Martin Kirby and Joey Ears and all them, weren't he, like mm-hmm. way back? Yeah. So, I think that was the first time we saw him. Yeah. Mm. He, had a, he had a match with Bram, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's good as Bram. Yeah. I, think he, I can't remember if he beat beat Bram for the EPW title or because Bram came out all the time. Bram just came out of the end of Challenge and I can't remember if it was that many years ago. Yeah, I'm just good in it actually get to see it to absolute units. <laughs> Funny shows you want to promote? Well, I'm actually wrestling um, Tucker on the 27th of November in Bradford, my hometown. Oh, wow. At the Bilal Club, yeah, yeah, uh, for the squared circle. I'm looking forward to that. Like, I wrestled Tucker once before, and we were quite limited to what we can do because the roof wasn't too high, but now it's a high, it's a high roof, so now I'm really looking forward to putting a match on with him. 
That one. Oh, yeah, this looks fun. <laughs> that should be a great one. Welcome, kid, Jake Silver here. You're a broken but glorious podcast. Get stoked on it. Right, so if you're promoting for a day, promoting a show, using wrestlers you've either worked or trained with, wrestlers associated to you in some way. If I give you a match type, you tell me who you put in that match. Yeah, let's do it. And as it's your show, every match can be intergender, every match can be triple threat, fill four way, yeah. five way, yeah. multiple person. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah. There's, no, there's no budget. <laughs> so. All right, let's do it. Cool. All right, so who'll be in your opening contest that crowd excited? Um, I'll probably put Joe. Absolute fun favorite, and he gets crowd behind him oh, every time. Yes, yeah, I, I love like I've known Joey for years now, and he's he's helped me out a lot as well. Like obviously at GPW and stuff, and mm-hmm. yeah, I'd probably put him against uh, Court Miles. Actually, I think that'd be quite a good mix that I've not seen before. He's somebody I want, really want to see live. If I've never seen him on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's cool. I think it, I think that match has surprised a lot of people. I think that'd be a really good match to watch. Mm. <laughs> that'd be great, opener. I think Joey Hayes is one of the people he's, he's like a modern day wrestling legend who he won't miss yeah. until, until he's gone you won't maybe not see the impact he has on the business until he's left the business yeah. maybe well, Joey, 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 Joey is usually an inventor isn't he but like mm-hmm. I say it can, it can fit in anywhere it can do it all kind of Joey yeah <laughs> what you say? Yeah, you're not going to be the main moment. events you want to be in the opening contest that's what people say yeah. <laughs> what about a comedy match a comedy match um I, I don't know if this is a well, technically or not, but I'd probably, if I could, I'd have Martin Kirby. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, but obviously the late great Chris Travis, like, because oh. uh, that, that that match at Attack Pro, oh, when Trav dressed up as Luigi, and <laughs> yeah. oh my god, I could not stop laughing. But like, Tra- Trav's another person that helped me out loads, and mm. yeah. I had, had a lot of time. A lot of people don't know know that and stuff like that. Like, obviously, I know I wasn't as close as he was to like Joey Hayes and obviously CJ Banks and everyone like that. But like, tra- of my early career, Trav really did take me under his wing and give me a lot of advice and st- mm. stuff. And yeah, because we wrestled for a company called GBW, but a very very low budget uh, promotion. Yes, uh, I don't think many people know about it. But yeah, I think Trav just came for a payday. But yeah, I just got to connect with him and stuff and he just gave me so much advice and really, really helped me out. Oh, amazing. He's somebody I wish I had had, had the chance to see live. Never yeah, got the chance. I, 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 I'm so grateful the fact that I got to wrestle Travel a handful of times. Like, just, I, I, I honestly believe if he was still here now, he'd be absolutely killing it in NXT UK, if not NXT. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was great. So I've come back and watched his stuff. So, yeah. so he, he, was, he did the T and T and A boot camp as well. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think he got yeah, through to the just, second round, but I think it was his illness yeah, couldn't get through. So. Got, yeah, they got diagnosed, didn't they? Mm. Yeah. yeah, but he was great. So. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that'll be definitely a, a British like Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that'll be a fun, a fun match. I love Kirby. I'm so glad he's come out for retirement now. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. <laughs> First time I saw saw him live, he was at the was at Wrestle Island. And, he, did, he came down the yeah. rumble and did the bushwhacker spot where he just came in, just <laughs> carried carried on doing the waving the arms and just got thrown straight out <laughs> so in for like two, three seconds. And I saw it easy night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, and then yeah, and just kind of, then just went back round just doing the bushwhackers arms back up the ramp. <laughs> it's just it's hilarious. No, it's fantastic. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but then then he can also do the serious. Main event stuff as well. This is yeah. Another yeah, yeah. guy can just fit in anywhere. So, so. yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Your women's title match. So this is I'd make a triple threat. I'd yes. have Rio versus yes. Jesse Jackson versus one of my favourites, Lizzie Evo. Yes, I love it, Lizzie. I think, I think they're all fantastic, but I, I, love, I love seeing Lizzie here. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Did you say uh, was it Catch where she was singing "You'll Never Walk Alone" to the ring? And I thought that's, no, just, no. So, that's how you. So, how do you get heat in Manchester where you live? Yeah. Top and sing "I'll Never Walk Alone." <laughs> <laughs> just belted out to the top of her voice. That was amazing. Yeah, she was actually a football mad in it, but yeah. um, no. I just, a, a, any of the promos at TNT, like they just, pfft, I mean, stitches with them. Like she, she just says it how it is, doesn't she? As well. Mm. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> That'd be a great match. Um, a mid card title match, so the workhorse title. Um, so I don't, by any means, I don't mean the mid cards and stuff. Like that, but I tell you what, I'd like to see Dean Olmey versus Ooh. the Shape. Ooh, 
because I wrestled uh, the Sheik a few times now and he's actually got some holds and I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, okay, how do I get out of this then? So I think he'd surprise a lot of people with his actual wrestling ability because I don't think, I don't know if he gets to show it off as often as he'd like to. Yeah. So I think, I think if anyone's going to bring it out, it's Dean. I think they'd have a really, really good match. Oh, that'd be fun. Well, yeah, someone please book it for my sake so I can watch it. <laughs> I love Dino Walk. <laughs> I like the shake as well. He's, he's a really nice guy in real life. We met him back. Yeah, yeah. He one of the funniest people I've met in wrestling. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we, went to, we went to All Star Wrestling. There was, was a meet and greet after it, and he, he couldn't bend down. I'm a, I'm a six year old, it must have been four then, but he's really small. So he couldn't bend, he just got a chair and put him not on the chair. <laughs> He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd bend down on his back and go. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's such a good, nice guy. <laughs> yeah, and Dean's great. I think he's, yeah. He can do the technical stuff brilliant and the, because I saw a match of him and James Mason and it was, yeah, yeah. it was the fun, funniest match I've ever seen and the most technically brilliant match I've ever seen. It was just like, yeah. just everything. Well, it's funny when he puts in moves of the week on Instagram. I'm just like, mm. how on earth has he just done that? Yeah, how's he just come up with things? <laughs> so. yeah, I, only, I have to watch it like four times. I still can't click on it. I'm like, what has he just done there? Mm. Oh, obviously, he's just got away, doesn't he? Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's still only in his mid 30s as well, so still got loads of years left in him to come up with stuff. I'm so. not a terrible one of I'd love to wrestle Dean or Mark. That's a, that's a match I'd love to have. Mm. It's great. <laughs> um, and a hardcore extreme rules, like hot, like stipulation type match. Just, just to get my revenge back, I'd have Isaac North. Yes. Versus uh, Big Effing Joe. Oh. <laughs> because <laughs> because I, 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 Isaac needs some receipts because he gave me a, a, an ass kicking this weekend. Mm. Yeah, if you watch that... Um, Hi, highlight clip I put up it. Oh, you hear my six year old going, He's hurt his leg. Jimmy's hurt his leg. He's really <laughs> hurt his leg it's the whole way through. Like, How's he getting up on the top rope if he's got a sore leg? Like... <laughs> yeah, had to grip my teeth for that one. Mm. <laughs> I, I worked at, at Paramount Wrestling for a show. And the okay. whole, they, they, they were doing a six man hardcore match, and, and Isaac was just there the whole show, just making a Bob wire board. <laughs> Terrified by the time he finished it. I was like, oh, God. Just... I'm glad he didn't come with it with TNT. Yeah. We must have spent an hour and a half building it just for one spot in front of 30 people, maybe. I was like, oh. Dedicated to calls. Yeah. I was like, oh, it was a scary, scary bump. <laughs> like, yeah. Because I think the first time I met Big Joe were at a, uh, a TNT show and, mm. um, yeah, obviously, you see his character and you think, well, this guy's mental. And then uh, he, he asked to see one of the paramedics and he asked so politely and I was, I was just absolutely strong. I'm like, eh? <laughs> Is that the same person? I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, I, I was absolutely blown away with this, how polite he was. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Oh, he's, he's some guy I haven't, I haven't had a chance to see live yet, but he's, yeah, he's, what I've seen on yeah. YouTube and stuff is amazing. So, I'm, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I love his run at TNT and I love it. Is it Rise Wrestling he's in as well? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's really good. Um, uh, tag team title match. Tag team title match. See, that's it. I'd promote this like mad. I think uh, I'd like to see, see who the, the kings are of the TNT, divi- the, the um, tag team division. Mm. And I'd have the Lion Kings versus yes. Kings of the North. Since, since that's who the true kings are, huh? I think cool clash of styles as well. I think like, I'd like that. Yeah. So yeah, I'd love, let's sit, let's see who <laughs> sits on front at the end of it. That'd be fun. I'd love to, I'd love that much. <laughs> yeah, to get to Jay Apt, I should book that. Get the yeah, Kings over. Again, I, I think again, people won't expect it's not not a match that you think on paper. You think, oh, what, what a way match up, but I think it, they'd put on such a good show. Mm. Oh, that'd be really fun. <laughs> what about your main events, your title match? Or... My main event. So, obviously, working with Val Holt recently, I, I, I've seen how good he is now and stuff, and the fact that he's back, I, I love to see him, him back and that. And he just, he just looks the part, if you get me. Like, soon, as soon as he comes out, you know, like, someone's going to get their ass kicked here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have uh, Val Cabius as face versus Sonna Derson. Oh, yes. I think, I think that would be a, 
a, a crazy clash because I know Sonic can, I don't do it as much as he used to do, but I know he can fly because I've trained with Sonic quite a bit mm. and I know he can fly. Can do just what I, it's the same as I can do. So I'd love mm. to see them two go at it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've watched quite a bit of early Sonic and recently. And yeah, he's cool. Yeah, I think I think face Sonic is a completely different wrestler to heel Sonic Yeah, it's just it's I, crazy. I think Con- to keep up with all the intensity, yeah, you'd have to be the Turkish Wolf. Turkish Wolf yeah. to come and, you know, come yeah. and play. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be a great card. A great main event. Oh, mm-hmm. you see, yeah. Were you at the that well, was um, Falcavius versus Scott Abram and after the match, you just yeah, I was, battered yeah, him. I was, yeah. yeah, absolutely battered him. It was, oh. I saw after match as well. I'm surprised he got back up and he uh, managed to come back from it though, didn't he? To be fair. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I yeah. So I'm assuming that will set up a title match with Falcavius in the near future. No. Maybe. Oh, oh, I think he deserves one after that performance. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Yeah, he's so good. <laughs> All right, so where can the people see him in the future? Mentioned your match with Tucker. So, so yeah, my match with Tucker on the 27th of November. I've got Tidal on the 18th of December. Uh, Unstoppable on the 30th of October. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure I missed a few out, but they're the ones I can remember at the top of my head. I need to get. I really need to get out to Yorkshire to see watch some of these promotions. They're so good on. YouTube. I'd like, oh, love to be in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Oh. I know that Rise has got a lot of buzz right now. See, r- r- that's that, that's another place I would like to work is Rise. It, it just looks absolutely mental. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> what I'd really, I'd, I'd, really, I'd really love to be in that crowd. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I, 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 but yeah, I, you can't beat it though. People are, that are there and like just really into the wrestling. Like, mm. it's, it's, it's not like it. Obviously, you get your. Like your family crowd and stuff like that, like, which is obviously it's nice to see the, the, the kids happy and stuff like that. But when you get your like, true diehard wrestling fans that kind of understand the business a bit, mm. it's like you want to you try and press them as much as you can. Uh, before we go, do you want to promote any social media you have? Um, yeah, so my Instagram is it's Jimmy Jackson. Uh, so drop me a follow on there, guys. And also, <clears throat> I don't know who's aware of this as well, but I work for an entertainment company called Neverland. Um, and basically, we do like acrobatics, still walking, fire breathing. It's all circus type performances. So, oh, amazing! Yeah, that, that's kind of yeah. I've been around circuses all my life, really. Kind of that, that's why I fit straight into wrestling, I guess, because just just the same as a circus. <laughs> yeah, I'll put links to everything in the description of the interview. Um, I've really enjoyed speaking today. I'd love to have you on again in the future. So, so. Yeah, thank you for to be back on there. Thank you very much to for the afternoon.